Te Whatua is now using an equity adjuster score tool which aims to reduce inequity in the health system by using an algorithm to prioritise patients and give Māori more equitable treatment. National Party Health spokesperson Dr Shane Niriti says race has no place in surgical priorities. Dr Shane Niriti joins us now. Tēnā koe e te tākuta. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, the tool has been in use in Auckland since February without incident. So why do you want the government to, to drop this criteria? It hasn't been without incident. Uh, I was receiving uh, letters from clinicians and others very concerned. The concern that we have is <clears throat> that when it comes to clinical decision making for surgical wait lists, it should only be based on health need. That should be the first priority. There shouldn't actually be uh, an adjuster there uh, for ethnicity. The moment we add that, then we run the risk of tomorrow, they'll add an adjuster for the depth of your pocket. And the day after that, it will be on your worth in society, the good works that you've done, or maybe the good works that you're going to do in the future. And as soon as we move away from health need as the first principle for clinical decision making on surgical waiting lists, uh, significant problems will occur. Isn't there some way to balance the scales in Māori and Pacifica health statistics that, that are woefully blown on Māori? Oh, yes, there are. There's a range of ways to do that. First of all, we need to have uh, cultural competency across the whole health sector. Uh, we need to have better cultural competency training at medical schools and nursing schools. Um, we need to have the colleges with their annual certification uh, continuing to certify for cultural competence and uh, certainly at an organisational level, uh, that cultural competency assessment as well. So uh, undoubtedly there are inequities for Māori. I've talked about them for decades, even published on them. I'm not not denying that at all, uh, but this is not the way to adjust them. Uh, this is not the way to address them. And uh, cultural competency across the sector is how we should be doing this. Well, the algorithm doesn't just use ethnicity to prioritise uh, patients, uh, clini clinical priority, time spent on the wait list, there's um, geographic location and, and depriva deprivation levels are all taken into account. So why are you focusing on ethnicity? So you've answered your own question. Why do we need ethnicity? If we're wanting to address inequities, those other factors, which apply to everyone, address inequities, because what you didn't actually mention there, there's also a deprivation uh, uh, adjuster as well. This would pick up the inequities that we're looking to address um, for Māori and Pacifica without introducing an ethnic adjuster. So it's already built into the formula and we don't need to add that adjuster. Priority treatment based on ethnicity. Didn't you advocate for this during COVID due to Māori more likely to have comorbidities? Uh, what I advocated was for Māori health providers to be given the tools and the resources um, to be able to reach where mainstream could not, and I still absolutely advocate for that. So if the policy setting uh, is that uh, we don't have ethnicity, uh, as a decision maker in the policy setting at an implementation level, how we can then address uh, those groups, those vulnerable groups like Māori and Pacifica, that comes down to the health providers that we want to resource and fund and encourage. Uh, that's how we're going to address those inequities. And that was what I was saying during COVID as well. In fact, I actually wrote a letter to the uh, uh, minister uh, challenging him to fund Māori health providers, I think it was a million dollars each, as I recall, uh, to, to try and lift uh, those COVID rates, that's all at an implementation at a provider level, how we utilise and support them to raise the, the levels that we want to raise. All of these uh, solutions that you're providing appear to be short-term solutions. So what are some of the long-term long, long -term solutions uh, that you would consider? What, what's the fix in the short term in order to, to fix in, in, in inequities for Māori and Pacifica Health? Two parts to that. I wouldn't say that actually building cultural competency across the sector is a short-term solution. Uh, that is actually a short, medium and long-term solution. There are things we can and should do today, uh, but there is a pervasiveness across organisations that uh, is going to take some time to, to, to get a culture, uh, to get a culture shift. I think there are some structural things that we can do to reduce inequities. And uh, those are things that uh, I'll be bringing forward in the manifesto, uh, which I look forward to having discussion with at a later time. Are you getting pressure from your party to, to focus on this, prior, on, on Māori inequity, on, on this particular issue? Oh, uh, I'm getting uh, pressure, appropriate pressure, uh, from everyone who is concerned about the health system, uh, from everyone who is concerned that we have the longest waiting list that we have ever seen, uh, that we have ED wait times that are six, seven, eight, nine hours, everyone who is in the health system 
and is touching the health system, is deeply concerned uh, by that experience. Uh, that's the pressure that, that I have, and it's appropriate pressure. The aspirations that I have are that everyone can have uh, the best life that they could possibly have with timely access to quality health care. That's the aspiration that I have. The National Party has its annual conference this weekend. Is health on the agenda? And if so, what is your approach to the health needs of the country? Uh, so I do have a, uh, a speech along with my colleague uh, Matt Ducey uh, during the conference and uh, we'll be pointing out some highlights and looking at the signals that we're sending with the policies that we have announced uh, around increasing the breast cancer screening age and uh, the nursing bonding health workforce uh, policies that we've brought forward. Uh, there are signals that we're sending with those policies. So um, we'll be discussing what those signals are uh, in lieu of bringing forward the full manifesto. On that note, we'll leave it there. Dr Shane Viretti, thank you very much for your time. Tēnā hui. Nā, ke pai tora.